You won't believe how easy it is to make super delicious falafel at home. I'm Justin from Cooking with Coit. I specialize in clean comfort cooking. And remember, if you love this video, make sure you hit those like and subscribe buttons. Let's get started. Let's first go over all the ingredients you need to make this recipe. Chickpeas, cilantro, parsley, baking powder, onion, garlic, vegetable oil for frying, I like avocado oil, cumin, cayenne, coriander, and salt and pepper. And the special cooking tools you're gonna need for this recipe are food processor, a deep frying oil strainer, and a pot for frying. All right guys, so the first thing you need to do for this falafel recipe is to think ahead. You do have to prep a little bit the day before you wanna make it. So grab your chickpeas. My recipe calls for one cup of chickpeas. Then you're going to dump it into a bowl just like this and you want to fill the bowl with water. And definitely make sure that you add at least an inch or two of water above where the dry chickpeas are sitting. So you are going to let these chickpeas soak up the water for at least eight hours. The chickpeas are basically going to double in size, maybe triple in size. So check out this. This is the difference between a dry chickpea and one that has soaked overnight. So you might be tempted to use canned chickpeas do not use canned chickpeas for this. You've got to soak your own raw chickpeas overnight to make for the best flavor of these falafel. Next thing we need to do is to prep our veggies and herbs. So all we have to do is to take the skin off of our garlic. Next thing we're gonna do is to cut our onion. So for this, uh, you don't really need to dice or mince it or anything like that. My recipe calls for a half a cup of onion. So for this one, I'm going to assume that it's probably a little less than half. Okay. Next, we're going to prep our parsley and cilantro. So for this, my recipe calls for one cup of each. All I'm going to do is to cut the thickest part of the stems off, and that is all you need to do. All right, guys, so now we're gonna be taking all of the ingredients that we've prepped, and we're going to be putting them into our food processor. I love recipes like this because it's literally like just a little bit of prep, and then you dump them into one machine, the machine does the work for you, and then you're almost done, so. I love this recipe. What I need to do now with these chickpeas, they've been soaking overnight. They're the ones that I showed you earlier. Now I need to go drain and rinse these. So I'll do that and I'll be right back. All right, these guys have been drained and rinsed. Let's add them to our food processor. Oh wait, I think I put more than a cup in here because I was trying to make a little bit more last night in case something happened to the recipe. Give me a sec. My recipe calls for one cup of uncooked chickpeas. So this is what we're gonna do. Take this out. So this is good to show mess ups because I feel like everybody always messes up, including me. I literally mess up almost every time I'm making something. And the thing you need to do is to not freak out and you need to kind of very thoroughly think, okay, what are my next steps that are gonna get me back on track with this recipe? So to me is, let's take out the chickpeas from here. Let's put them back into the bowl just so they're all in one spot and just in thinking about the size of these soaked chickpeas compared to the size of our unsoaked chickpeas, it was literally about double the size, let's say. So essentially one cup of unsoaked chickpeas is gonna be two cups of soaked chickpeas. I think that's a really good save here. Let's do that. So I'm going to scoop out two cups of these soaked chickpeas and that should be good. I might add just a little bit more just for good measure and that's it. That should totally get us back on track. Next thing we're gonna do is to take our herbs and dump them into our food processor. Now, I don't think that air is gonna happen with you guys for your uh, soaked chickpeas. I've gotta prep for these videos, and so I gotta do things that you guys probably wouldn't normally do. So just keep in mind, it is one cup of unsoaked chickpeas, dry chickpeas to start, and after that, you're gonna be totally fine. Now I'm gonna add in my veggies, that is the onion and the garlic. Now we're gonna move on to our spices. We're gonna start with black pepper. That is a half a teaspoon. We're also going to add a half a teaspoon of cayenne. Next, we're adding one teaspoon of cumin. So what I love about cumin in this recipe is that it is probably the hero flavor. It's gonna be what you taste when you eat the falafel. It's what all the traditional falafel is made from, so don't skip the cumin. Next, we're gonna add one teaspoon of coriander. And last, we're gonna add one teaspoon of baking powder. And the baking powder is really going to help the balls fry really well, get nice and crispy, and also be like a little bit kind of spongy, but in a good way. All right, so now we're gonna put the top on and we are going to turn it on and just pulse. Give me a sec, I totally forgot to add the salt. My amazing cameraman, Aman, just let me know. 
Sorry, I'm moving too fast. So let's add one uh, teaspoon of salt. Thank you for that. Okay, back to the food processing. So I am going to keep pulsing until I have reached a really nice texture of the mixture. The mixture should stick together when you hold it really tight in your hand, and I'll show you that. If it doesn't hold together, it's not gonna hold together while we're frying it. And you can hold down the pulse button and kind of like just process it a little bit if you want. What I like to do is also, ooh, this is looking good, hang on. What I like to do is to scrape down the sides every once in a while just so that we're getting any of these bits of uh, parsley and cilantro, we wanna get it down into the blades. Wow, it smells so amazing. I don't think you're ready for how good this smells. It smells incredible. I'm so excited for you to give it a try and I really hope it comes out great for you because I love this recipe. So let's keep processing. Okay. All right, this is looking great. So let me show you guys what it should look like right about now. All right, so the next step is to give it a squeeze with your hand. So let's go ahead and do that. If it is the right texture and consistency, when you squeeze it, it should hold together just like this. Let me show you. Next thing we need to do is to pop the top back on here. And I am going to take this off and refrigerate it for an hour. All you need to do is refrigerate it for one hour. This is gonna help the mixture hold together really nicely while you're frying. All right guys, so now we've taken our falafel mixture out of the fridge, which has been sitting there for an hour. So now we're gonna be making the falafel into the ball shape. First thing you need to do is to take a scoop with your hand. And what I like to do is I like to just compact it as tightly as I can. Now, one little thing that I also do, I grab a little bit extra and as I'm squeezing, I'm feeling, if it feels like there's a little too much water in there, it still feels like these are a little watery. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna squeeze the water out just a little bit. You're gonna see this kind of green liquid come out. All you have to do is just squeeze a little bit of water out and I think that's gonna make them the perfect texture. This is pretty much the size that I like. It's almost like a ping pong ball type of size, maybe a little bit bigger. All right guys, so the next thing you need to do is to add your oil into your pot or saucepan, whatever you're gonna use. I like to add just about three inches of oil and you need to bring that oil to as close to 350 degrees Fahrenheit as you possibly can. You don't wanna go much more over that temperature because otherwise your oil is gonna to start to smoke. If you go too far under that temperature, then you're not gonna get a nice, good deep fry. The way that we check it is grab your Instant Read Digital Thermometer. I hope you have one. You really do need one for this. It should land just about 350 degrees. And if you're, you know, within 10 degrees off, that should be completely fine. That is 346 degrees, that is perfectly good. All right, so now we're gonna take our falafel balls and put them into our strainer very carefully, just about three at a time. And the reason why I don't do more than that is because when you put something cold into the hot oil here, it's gonna bring the temperature down of the oil. So if you put too many cold things in, you're really not gonna get a nice good frying temperature like that 350 degrees. So I think three at a time is pretty good. I just drop it in really slowly. and then let them fall out. And then as they're cooking, the next thing you need to do is just to try to keep them moving around a little bit. You don't have to go too far and moving around constantly, but I like to just make sure that they're getting a nice good fry all the way around the falafel ball in the oil. And then what I'm looking for here is essentially a nice golden brown color to form. And once they've hit that golden brown, that's when I take them out. Actually, which reminds me, I need to grab a plate and line it with paper towels. And this is where we're gonna put them after they're done frying to soak up any of that uh, extra oil. Okay, let's see how we're doing here. Ooh, these are looking great. So let me show you guys how these are looking. There we go. Check out these. This is exactly what we're looking for. And now we're gonna transfer these to the paper towel lined plate and let them soak up that extra oil. And now we're gonna do uh, our next falafel balls and we're just gonna work in batches. Oh, shoot. Oh no, guys, 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 one fell apart. So this is what happens if you don't give them a really good squeeze so that they hold together. So let me just take these ones out. It might happen, you might lose one or two of these along the way and that's totally normal and totally fine. Don't worry about it, that's why you need to make enough just so you have extra. Now we're just gonna dump them back into the oil. All right guys, this falafel looks so incredible. I cannot wait to give it a try. But before I do, if you love this recipe and you wanna see more just like it, check out my Healthy Recipes playlist. Okay, let's give these a try. All right. I am uh, dipping these in hummus, which is my favorite dipping sauce for these falafel. 
Mmm. Mmm. This falafel has the absolute most delicious flavor. You really taste the herbs and the garlic coming through and the outside is super crunchy. It is the perfect texture. Guys, I know you're gonna love this recipe. I hope you give it a try. I'll see you in the next one.